We good, we good. Good, we good. Hey, what's up with y'all? Y'all know what time it is, man. It's Bobby Everything with the Crock-Pot Cartel. Coming at y'all with an exclusive interview with my my dog, Regal Six, man. Regal Six, what's going on with you, man? What up, what up with y'all? Y'all already know what it is, man. Same old struggle, man. You already know. Yeah, it's good to see you, my boy. It's good. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers. Let them know a little bit about yourself. Maybe like where you're from, how old you are, how long you've been doing music. You know, a quick background. Yeah, check it though. I've been doing music probably since I was like a jit. So that's like six or something. You know what I mean? I remember uh, watching Michael Jackson and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, what's his name? Tevin Campbell, all type of stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. Um, I'm from Virginia. Uh, if anybody familiar with the area, 757 Tapwater area. Uh, I'm from a city out of there, Portsmouth. Um, Notable from there, Missy Elliott is our only notables from there, Portsmouth, Virginia. But shout out to Portsmouth, Virginia. Shout out 757. Um, it's my name is Regal Six. Uh, I've been doing music, like I said, for a little minute now. Um, I'm really getting a little push from it, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm just different, you know what I mean? You just got to come mess with the vibe. You know anything about VA, you know we're a melting pot, you know what I'm saying? So come rock with me. Where'd you come up with that name, Regal Six? Uh, really, for real. Uh, my handle used to be Rugarell, but I was like, I can't really market Rugarell because it's not a marketable name. So, what I did, I went into dictionary, and I went to dictionary, and I looked up King, but everybody got the name King. So I was like, okay, well, what's something that mean King or mean Royal, but don't nobody really use? So it took me like probably like two weeks, man. I finally came up with Regal. You know what I'm saying? So that's the first part of my name. Plus, my name is Real anyway. So Regal Rail, you know what I'm saying? The R is already, you know what I'm saying? The flow. And then six come from because, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a Gemini. So my birthday, June 6th, you know what I'm saying? So it was like Royal Six, you feel me? So that's why I came up with the name. And it's kind of like I can market it, you know what I'm saying? When I do my modeling, Regal Six, you know what I'm saying? My brand is Regal Six, so it just flow. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Like a lot of people just be throwing shit together. Like it really don't even have no meaning. So, you know, it's nice right. to see that you got a little bit of meaning behind your shit. I, right. I heard you just say something about modeling. Tell us a little bit about that, man. How'd you get into the modeling and how's that been going for you? Have you seen any uh, success with that? Like how passionate are you uh, about the modeling? Oh, uh, well, with the modeling, um, I got into it. Uh quick story when i was a youngster uh we used to have the family unions or whatever my mom dudes used to make me and my brother model because she used to do the whole little uh talent show with the jump so we used to model and stuff and then since there it just kind of took on so then i came so then i came home and then i got into it or whatever i got it doing it with instagram I'm, um i done some modeling like with some uh instagram people with the tattoos you know what i'm saying because i got a lot of tattoos so really that's where i got a bigger uh following that with the tattoos and the modeling or whatever but i be putting my name and stuff for booking or whatever but like i'm just serious with it too like with everything because i'm just a creator so whatever i look into create and i want to create you know what i'm saying i want to act i want to do it all you feel me go ahead and tell us about some of them tattoos man like maybe tell us about the first one and and your favorite one my first one, right, uh, I got it when I was like 16. So when I got it, it's my grandma name, and then I got my mama name, and then I got the word Nino going up my arm. So uh, I know he ain't supposed to have me at 16, so I get him at 16. So I'm like, I'm flexing, you know what I'm saying? Shirt off, I think I'm hard. I got three tattoos. <laughs> Got my mama name, I got my nickname, Nino. You know what I'm saying? Nino was something that I called myself too because this is when I was little because my favorite movie was New Jack City. So I used to watch that movie every single day, dog. I'm talking about New Jack City. I used to watch that tape to the tape pop. So when I um so when I moved to Maryland, because I was staying in Virginia, then I moved to Maryland. So when I went to Maryland, I was telling everybody, like, yeah, my name Nino, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, my name Nino. So I got that tatted on me or whatever. But uh my most favorite tattoo. I would have to say if I had to pick one, I would have to pick the piece I got on my leg for my uh, for my cousins and stuff that passed away. If I would have to say that's the most favorite one. Okay, then. Yeah, yeah, man. I actually got a tattoo appointment coming up next month, man. I'm kind of excited for it, but I'm also kind of like, damn, it's a five-hour session on the side. 
Oh yeah, that's not real, boy. That's not real. That's not real. But I love it. like I'm a, um I'm looking for the next convention to come through here. Um, down here in Atlanta, I'm gonna go to the tattoo convention because I got like over 200 tattoos. You know what I'm saying? So that's something I'm into too. So how long you been staying down there in Atlanta? Um, right now it's going on like three years. You like it down there more than VA? <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Home is home, but down here it's a lot of opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just easier to make it from where I come from, from Virginia, where everything is tight and you got to yeah, fight for everything. You feel me? Damn near got to fight for a job, huh? Hey, ain't no damn near. You got to fight for it. And you still might don't get it. It's plentiful in uh, GA, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, all you got to do is come down here with some drive and the idea. And you gonna boom, bro. And that's real life, bro. So how long have you been actively recording music? When would you say your your first recorded song was dropped? Uh 2018. I came home and recorded. Uh if you go look at my music, uh guys follow me on Apple Music, Spotify, uh YouTube, all major platforms. If you go look at my music, uh really King is my first one I recorded. But really, Hami, the song Hami, is just, I recorded that my first day at home when I came home from incarceration. So really, I would say when I recorded Hami and King, so that's like 2018. Like, I came home and straight first day went straight to the booth and recorded, you feel me? Tell us a little bit about that incarceration. Oh, yeah, well, sh I did like, uh, well, ain't no like I did. I did 50, I did 11 years and I would say eight months, you dig, on some... On everybody say on some shit like I'm innocent. Everybody be like, yeah, I'm innocent. I ain't do it, but for real, I'm innocent. But yeah, I did my time. You know what I'm saying? Like a, I did a whole decade in uh, Virginia DOC. Came home, um, came home April 2018, and just really got to it. You know what I'm saying? Left Virginia, came down here uh, to Atlanta because my brother was already set up down here. Uh, BT in the building. You can follow him on Instagram. He a producer. So I already came down here to rock with him, and then I just came down here and stayed. And then I came down here and planted my flag. Now I got a whole career, family, the whole nine. You know what I mean? But I came down here with successful, and I'm just like he was saying, like, where I'm from, to have as many strikes. Like, I had, like, I got a nine felons. I had, like, nine felons, a whole bunch of tattoos, just come home and all that stuff. Like, it's hard, and it's sad to say, but where I'm from, it's hard when you come home. Like, they're going to judge you. You still getting judged for some stuff you did when you was a kid. You know what I'm saying? So then that's how you fall back into the system. So coming out here with a brush of fresh air because they accepted me and now I'm doing good. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing, man, because I know how it is, man. I know how it is coming home, being a felon and, you know, trying to do the right thing and getting shut down. And then that just forced you. Well, it don't force you, but, you know, it just make it seem a lot easier just to jump back in the streets. and, and Make it very more appealing. Then, very more then you on your way back to prison. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle, man. But, you know, uh, from from the looks of it, you broke the cycle. And, you know, from no. the looks of it, I finally broke the cycle this time. So, you know. Question we broke it. Yes, sir. So, like, also I heard you say that you went down to uh, Atlanta and started a family. So, you met somebody down there and, and had some yeah. kids. Yeah, well, um, I already had a daughter previously. You know what I'm saying? My daughter, 15, I already had a daughter, but then I came down here and met my um, my baby mama. Now we live together now. Yeah, we had two kids. I got two little boys, one one nine months and the other four. Yeah, so they keep me they keep me plenty busy. <laughs> I already know how that is. Plenty busy, but it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful situation, though. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like being caught in that vicious cycle, you know, with the street life and 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 in and out of prison. Mm -hmm. I I was focused so much on myself, you know, I was being selfish when mm -hmm. when really I should have just been focused on my kids and then I probably wouldn't have ended up going back and forth and back and forth to prison. So like once I finally grasped that concept like man Instead of being selfish, I need to be selfless. That's right. when that's when everything really, really started to turn around for me. And real G talk though, cause when I had my daughter, I had my my daughter, I was like two, 
my, I was in my twenties. When I had her, people were like, well, you had your first child, it's supposed to slow you down. But I'm like, nah, I was still, I'm on Ray. I was just still about, see what I'm saying? Self, you know what I'm saying? I want selfless, you know what I'm saying? But when I got forced to sit down and you already know the stuff you go through and enduring there, you have forced, you forced to let that stuff go if you want to make it out. Yeah. So then I home, you know what I'm saying? I adapted that with that. That's real G talk though. So what would you say inspires your music? Far as what you mean by inspire, far as like creation wise, or far as like inspiration. Maybe like give us some some things that inspire you, like other artists or <clears throat> or or previous genres, and then maybe like tell us a little bit about um what what inspires your writing process. Okay, so uh, when it goes to like influence, I go all the way back to Diggable Planets. Diggable Planet was the first rap album I ever bought. My pops let me and my brother get some rap albums. Of course, it was no cussing. If y'all don't know who Diggable Planets is, go look them up. Well, I got my first joke, and that's what kind of turned me on. But then other than that, I had big influences from, uh, of course, uh, Teddy Pendergrass to the Isley Brothers to... Michael Jackson to NWA to Prince to Biggie Smalls to Wu Tang the Hot Boys. See, like I'm like a real melting pot. Like I say, like where I'm from, everything come in there. So like my influence go on and on and on and on. I can talk to you about Big Daddy Kane. I can talk to you about Cypress Hill. Yeah, you know I'm saying I can talk to you about. I can talk to you about Dr. Dre. I can talk to you about Easy E. You know what I'm saying I can talk to you. We can go on DJ Quick. You know what I'm saying? Whatever region you want to go, I'm, I can go because I'm just love, I just love music. But if I had to say hands down who inspired me, it would be Michael Jackson. That's hands down who inspired me just because you're seeing him in concert. This is the fact. And the things that he did just as a child had affected me, like made me want to do that. And then as um, far as my writing process, my writing process, I'm a writer. So really, I, I tell stories. All my songs that you listen to, I'm telling the story. So either I'm telling the story of something I experienced or something I visualized and I experienced. So I, something I seen, you feel me? So that's that's my writing process. So I, I write about my feelings and how I feel and things that I experienced. You feel what I'm saying? And how did it affect me? So you'll never really hear me making no braggadocious rap or whatever, not, nothing against it. But I won't probably really make them songs until I attain it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just the type of writer I am. I got to write about actual experiences and actual things that I had been through. Yeah, bro, I can definitely relate to you because, you know, Michael Jackson was always my favorite too. <laughs> I was yeah. a big Michael Jackson fan, man. Bro, I love yeah. MJ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. First it was Elvis, then it was uh -huh. MJ. <laughs> So, uh, how many songs would you say you got recorded right now? Um, probably like 30, 30, 40. Uh, see, it's hard. Like, I do mine in projects. So I probably got like four, five projects in the clip right now that I can just drop like boom, 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 boom. So, yeah. Do you record your own music or are you going to local studios? Got um, it's a little bit of both. Uh, like I said, I was going to um, record with my brother BT in the building. He got his own um, studios and stuff like that. And I also was going to this place called Bravo Productions. You know what I'm saying? It's a Bravo Studios. It's out here in Atlanta. Um, you can look them up too on Instagram at Bravo Studios at BT in the building. So they really be the only two places I have recorded. I really don't like to go a whole bunch of places and record my music because I just know how the game go and I know how masters work and all that stuff. So I really be smart and selective about my recording. So you haven't got a home set up yet? Uh, not in my house, no, not yet. Like I say, like, uh, well, when I move, when I move finally and I move to a crib, I get it set up right now, but no, not right now, though. So that's definitely something that that you want to do in the future though is be able to be able to record and mix and produce your own music right record mix like i said because i'm into creating anyway so i want to have a studio and i can record mix do photography do um graphic design i want a studio that i can do all that stuff even do stuff like that like podcast uh film direct 
all type of stuff like that too because i was going to uh, atlanta technical college for film and um film and photography so you know what i'm saying so that's something i do want to get into but i know i do have to have a home studio and the recording it's just more important as the lens yeah of course so so who is producing all your music right now your brother uh yeah he produced um we're pretty much that's well with what's coming out now in devil's a lot that's bravo studios um it's a it's a, it varies bravo studios um but between those songs that I have, it's between Bravo Studios and BT in the building. Huh? So, like, as far as going and finding beats on the internet, YouTube beats, you you doing that? Uh, really not really for real, for real. If I do do it, it's uh, it's very vague. But I probably do it every now and then, like uh, and I reach out to the producer and then or uh, talk to the producer. But one producer that I'm really on. Um, gonna really really do some work with this project that i have coming up with the swag beats he matter of fact he out of uh, cleveland As a matter of fact if i ain't mistaken yep he from cleveland swag beat you might want to check him out bro dope so uh i'm uh, um i'm definitely gonna get a lot of his beats too where'd you get hip to him at uh honestly uh off of uh when i was incarcerated we used to have these kiosks jumps and they used to give us these players and these J players uh, you... J the J yeah <laughs> So when you plug them up, you know what I'm saying? You can get instrumentals and stuff. So I had started back getting into the music stuff and Swag B stuff used to come up. So his his stuff came up, Swag B volume one, volume two. You can get it for like, I think it was a deal too. You get like two of them jokes for like 19.99, you know what I'm saying? So I bought them and I wrote to every last, just like every last song we here. So then when I came home, I looked bro up and bro got a whole catalog out. So I'm like, dang, I can, I'm a really rock with bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what's up. So, like, if you was to explain your music to a new listener, how would you explain? Um, I would say it's the art of the art of storytelling with major expression and drunken sound. Oh, okay, then I like the drunken sound. Yeah, because I like to play with sounds. If you hear all my songs, they really not really. You can hear my voice, but I really try to push the sound and flirt with sound and stuff like that so yeah so what you got in store for 2022 um i'm releasing my debut uh mixtape was gonna be called heartbreak kid um i'm also probably gonna release my um graphic novel this year too uh deadly uh deadly friends um that's a probably pretty much it i'm really gonna push this i'm really pushing this uh mix i'm really pushing this mixtape man because i uh push this mixtape all the way to the end of the year um i might do a couple of features with some of my bros or whatever but uh work on these visuals man and push the project man to keep pushing the brand you already know every day work day heartbreak king yep what's the label called uh my label is gym life uh yep gym life llc that's my label um and the inspiration behind the name of that is gym life because i'm a gemini and then i also mess around with the boxing and stuff so and also it's the gym you know what i'm saying the gym it's like a uh what you say a uh a, a ton a double what is it a double uh a double entron yeah like that. yeah that part because it's gym and it's spelled g-e-m and then it's life spelled with y PH, you know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a double, you know what I mean? But yeah. So yeah. So so tell us a little bit about that graphic novel. Uh the graphic novel, um, I wrote it, I wrote it probably like uh probably like four years ago. I wrote it. And um basically it's about a girl, she's a or she's an orphan, but um she's an orphan and she remember why she's an orphan and she just remember like a tragic event, you know what I'm saying? A tragic event happened. She witnessed her mama get murdered, she ran. She runs when she runs, she comes in, and she goes in the streets. And when she comes in the street, she becomes like this queen of thieves, you know what I'm saying? Like, because she get befriended by this old lost and the thief, and he teach her how to th be a thief. So she can't read, she can't do nothing, but she becomes a master thief. But in between becoming a master thief, she run across somebody that's tied into her mama, and then she find out why her mama was killed, and she find out why she's so good at being a thief. And then it keeps going on and on from there. It's dope, though. So basically, it's like a triple crown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I'm hip to them triple crowns. 
Yeah. Cartel. Cartel. Yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. But it's more of a um. But see, like, yeah, it's more of a um. But it got like an anime twist to it too, because uh, because like she's gonna, cause like she's gonna find out she's a she's an assassin. Her mama was an assassin, but then she just not just an assassin. Her blood, she do her blood trail and then go back to go back to Asia and she come from some powerful monks. Like it's like when I say the storyline crazy, it's cra- <laughs> the plot thickens. It thickens. It thickens, G. It so thickens. so when you say graphic novel, mm-hmm. like do you mean like the text, huh. like the subject matter is graphic huh. or oh all right, so a comic. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a book's graphic novels. So, so all of that is is designed by you. All of the artwork is you. See, no, I haven't got the artwork yet. I'm looking for an artist. So, if there's any artist out there that's looking to collab on illustration with the graphic novel, hit me up at, on Instagram at Regal Six, or you know what I'm saying, hit me up on YouTube at Regal Six, or uh, on Gmail Regal Six at Gmail because that's what I need and that's what kind of helped me off of putting it out because i need somebody to do the illustration yeah that would be dope man and and you know there's a lot of talent that comes into the live stream and um somebody actually just hit me up last night and was like yo i do artwork and graphics they oh, wow. asked me if i wanted a logo so maybe i can plug you in with them that right there will probably be pretty dope to see y'all meet up off of the crock pot cartel and be able to you know what Cooks i'm saying up. yeah Get in that crock pot. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so like if uh you had to compare yourself to to an artist that's out right now or a artist that you listened to growing up. Well, let's say compare yourself to an artist that you listened to growing up and then compare yourself to an artist that's out right now. That's a good question. Uh compare myself to an artist that I say growing up, I would have to say Mm, that's tough and like you can even be like maybe like uh michael jackson with a little bit of you know what i'm saying it, it would have to be some busy bone it would have to be some bone thugs and harmony on my harmonizer this coming up uh and it had to be like on the slick rick snoop dog on the storytelling and like far as like my lyrics it had to be like back in the day it had to be like probably like uh prodigy you know what i'm saying like you know what i'm saying project because my style kind of i'm unpolished when it comes to rapping um now if i would have to say now that's tough now um now because i kind of like i'm like a, i'm like a melting pot still so now i would have to say it's tough jesus it's tough y'all had to say now i would have to say people like uh saint john people like uh don don um don Tom. Uh, people like Dom Kennedy, Wiz Khalifa, uh, R.I.P. Dolph. Like I'm, my style. Like I'm more of the Aunt G Herbo. Like people that's not not like the not like your typical status quo sound. You feel me? Yeah. So, yeah. who is uh three artists right now that you would want to feature with? Why? Okay, for one, like I said, Don Tolliver, because he he just, I mean, I like his sound, I like the way he, he unique. I like the way he look at music. I like the way he go about his project. I like that he write 90% all his music. I like he do all his production and all that stuff. So I think me and him definitely can make some crazy music. Uh, also, Summer Walker. Um, I really, I really love her sound, her voice. I was telling my girl the other day, I'm like, man, I don't know what it is. It's like, I'm just in love with her voice. Like, almost like how Erica Badu used to have me back in the day. Like, it's just, I don't care what Shorty's singing about. It's like. It just sound good. Yeah. yeah. And I love to do a record with her or write a record with her or whatever. She nice. She nice. She yeah. real nice. She definitely, she definitely hot, man. And then uh, I had to say, like, uh, for hometown, like, push a T. I love to do something for hometown for uh push. seven five seven push a T. Yeah. Oh. No I fuck with push, man. I fuck with push. No question. But prodigy too. I fuck with prodigy too. Oh well, yeah, prodigy a legend. RIP yeah. prodigy a legend. RIP pro <laughs> I remember when he first died, I was seeing memes like Jesus, why couldn't have you took havoc? <laughs> right. Oh wow, that's crazy. I ain't know wow. I ain't never seen that like that. that's crazy. I'm like, damn. Hey, Prodigy, Prodigy, that 
Prodigy, that H that um H and I C. I break bread, ribs, hundred dollar bills, pill on Ducati, on, another form of wheels, right? A book full of medicine to generate myths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You feel me? We <laughs> gone down. What more do y'all want from us? We yeah. spit our hard style and it still ain't enough. Come on, man. <laughs> what? Come on, man. Yeah. yeah, man. So, like, right. if you could change one thing about how the music industry today, what would it be? Um, the stronghold, the stronghold that. I would say the Mount Rushmore of hip hop got on it. Like for guys like us, like it's a stronghold for like talent like us to get in. So break the monopolizing, like just make it, just make it on an even playing scale. Make it even. And, and you know, I feel like times are changing, man. I feel like right now is, is the best time to be an independent artist. Right now is the best time to be a creator, you know, because yeah, it it's so easy for us to make music. You know, it's a lot cheaper than it was. And, you know, yeah. with all of these platforms <laughs> like TikTok and IG and YouTube, you know, we can really, we really don't need the labels. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. yeah, we still got to put that work in to get the but audience. You know they, but, you, but you also know them labels, they also, they just don't, it just don't stop with them. They, you know, they control, they control the DJs. They control like... So that's when I say like that's when I say like for them to get this just to break it, to break it, to break the threshold that they have on it. And if you walk, if you look at some artists and you listen to them, they'll talk about it. Like it's hard. Like if you ain't if you ain't in a certain group or you ain't friendly with a certain group, then you ain't gonna get spun like that. Or you ain't. I'm just like just make it even for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, no labels. Yeah, you don't need no labels or nothing like that. But let be 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 biased to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Even give everybody biased, a like, chance. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Even people like uh 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 like even though you know what I'm saying, I'm not I'm not a part of it in my life, but like people like Nas X, like people don't I say him and Frank Ocean, like bro, they were I ain't even know Nas X be writing his own music, bro. A great writer. Frank Ocean a great writer, but people be blackball for certain reasons, you know what I'm saying? And then you don't never hear nothing from him. And I can think about so many people on the other spectrum. I just like, man, just tear down all the politics and let's get back to judging people for music, dog. Give everybody a chance to yeah, let let me judge you on your music, bro. So, uh, let everybody know where they can find your music at, and let them know when you got that 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 new project dropping. When they can be on right. the lookout for that. Yep. So, um, you can catch all my music on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, Instagram Music, Facebook Music, um. You can also catch me on Instagram at Regal6. You can catch me on um, Bingo at Regal6. You can catch me on Rap Fame at Regal6. You can catch me on Wattpad at Regal6. You can email me at Regal6.com. As um, far as what I have coming up, uh, I just released Devils Alive. That's out now on all major platforms. Go stream that. Go support it. Share it um visual coming up for that probably uh probably beginning of march um my mixtape was projected to drop march probably middle of march uh heartbreak king you know what i'm saying be on the lookout for that first mixtape uh of course i'm gonna do some more modeling um i've been talking to a few companies about being ambassador for them so you'll see me ambassador some brands too later on down the year and just uh, pushing, you know what I'm saying? Pushing my project, pushing whatever I can push, man. You might see me in a commercial. You might see my picture on a bus ride band. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no time what you gonna see. Just know I'm getting I'm, to I'm, it. I'm getting to a Regal Six, man. Regal Six, y'all. That's R E A G A L S I X on all platforms. Y'all can check him out, man. This no right question. here has been the official Crock Pot Cartel interview. Yeah, I'll be safe. Ever settle no for. Anything but great, y'all. Appreciate you, G. Yep, you already know.